Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa and here I talk about how to successfully use co-creation processes such as hackathons, brainstormings and collaborative competitions to solve scientific, technological and business challenges. And today in this episode I want to talk about the structure of the co-creation process. I touched this topic a little bit in my video about 10 rules of the co-creation process and today I want to elaborate it because the structure is really important if we want to solve, if we work on a difficult, on a complex challenge. And today in this video I will talk only about the co-creation process itself. I'm not gonna cover the topics of preparation and I will not talk about the post-project activities. We will talk about them separately. So first of all, let's cover the basic structure. And the basic structure is actually the beginning and the end. So if you are working on the challenge, you need to have the beginning of your process, the introductory part and the end of it. And personally, from my experience, I usually also include the middle point, uh, especially when I have processes with teams, with a number of participants, it's a great way of doing some extra brainstorming and co-creation as well. But of course, I usually include this middle part in more or less long processes that take more than a couple of days, like hackathons or these collaborative competitions that might last for a year. Sometimes you have a number of strategic sessions that are connected with one goal. For example, you need to come up with a strategy for your organization and you don't want to do it within one session. You have a couple of sessions. This also, I would say, a one co-creation process. So here you can also use this structure where you have the beginning, the middle and the end. So what do you do at the beginning of the co-creation process? First of all, it's of course the introductory part. You really need to introduce the challenge, the rules, the criteria to evaluate the solutions. You need to introduce all the participants of the process to each other and you of course need to let your participants ask questions but in general this introductory part is all about the organizational things the organizational questions how everything is structured what is expected the longevity etc etc sometimes depending on the process you also want to include the presentation of initial ideas of your participants. For example, at the innovation consulting company I was working at, we always during our kickoff meetings had this special part dedicated to presentations and all the teams, all the university teams, they presented their first solutions, their first ideas to the client. It was a great addition to this introductory part because the client was able to make a decision whether they want to continue working with all these teams or they want to include just a few of them. They also had an idea of what to expect from the teams and which participants are strong at which areas. But again, it's not necessary, it's not always used in co-creation processes, so it's just an idea for you. But the main goal of the introductory part is to make sure that everything is clear to your participants and to everyone basically, that everyone understands the challenge, the focus points, the criteria, what is expected, the rules, the framework that you use, just everything. And as I said, let participants ask questions, answer them, and just make sure that everything is clear. Also, I have to highlight that in most cases, you need to actually share the challenge and the criteria and the rules with the participants before the introductory part, before the official start of the co-creation process. Because 
In this case, the participants will be able to come up with the initial ideas and they will be able to absorb the information and to think about the questions, to think about what information is missing and they will be able to come up with the questions before this introduction and just ask them straight away and you will save a lot of time. What other information can be shared during the introductory session? You can talk about the tools you're going to use throughout the process and it's also a great chance to talk about what has been already done, what has been tried to solve the problem. In the middle of the long-term process that lasts more than one day, it's good to gather together again with all the participants and do two things. First of all, it's great to hear their presentations again or for the first time if you haven't heard them before and listen to what has been done, what progress has been made and understand their ideas, what they're looking for and give them feedback, provide with some information whether what they're doing is moving in the right direction or you're looking for something else. This is why I think it is really important to have these middle point meetings. Such sessions and the feedback that you're going to provide to your participants will help them to improve later on. Such meetings are also a great chance to brainstorm all together and do this double co-creation and help participants to overcome some hurdles and to improve, strengthen their solutions. So here it is important to motivate all the teams, all the participants to help each other because especially if they are competitors, if they are rivals, they might be focused only on their solutions. But here you need to make sure that each and every one contributes to the solutions of other teams, of other participants. Because sometimes you don't see how you can change something, how you can overcome this problem, but others might see a way. It is quite difficult to have this open atmosphere, but it is possible. The end of the co-creation process is all about finalizing the ideas and presenting them to the jury, to the decision makers and for the decision makers to define the next steps and identifying the winner. The goal of this stage is to get maximum clarity about the best, the winning solution that you want to continue with. And again, what are you going to do next? Here it is really opposite to the beginning of the process and here participants need to make sure that everything in their solutions, everything in their ideas is clear to you, to project owners and to the client. And of course, after that, their solutions should be assessed based on the list of criteria. Once the solutions are assessed, you, your client or your management team, the project owner should define the next steps, what is going to happen after the project, whether the participants should be involved in the next steps, what should be changed, what should be improved. So everyone and especially the client of course or the project owner should understand what is happening after the co-creation process. So to sum everything up the basic structure for the co-creation process consists of the beginning, the middle point and the end. The beginning has the goal of clarifying the challenge, clarifying the criteria based on which the challenge, the solutions will be evaluated and explaining the rules and making sure that the participants understand the process fully. The middle part is about presenting the initial ideas, getting feedback for these ideas, discovering how to improve them and brainstorming between all the participants, all the teams. 
And the end of the process is about assessing the solutions and providing with clear next steps and providing with the winning the best solutions that are going to be implemented. Now each and every step of the process should be structured itself. It requires at least one dedicated meeting with a very clear agenda, with a very clear set of goals and set of activities that will get you closer to achieving the main goal, solving the challenge. Following this very basic structure of the co-creation collaboration process, you get more chances to obtain the result that you want to get the solution to your complex challenge. And this is it for today. I hope this video was useful for you. And in case you have any questions about co-creation processes, just let me know in the comments section. I will be happy to answer them in my next episodes. And for now, just have a good day and bye!